All right, welcome back everybody. Next up we have Dean Zodi, CEO of Ghostwave. Ghostwave designs stealthy radars that are low probability of intercept, low probability of jamming, and low probability of detection. Dean, the stage is yours. The company is Ghost Wave, a forest startup company in Columbus, Ohio. The company is Ghost Wave, a forest licensing from Ohio State University. The technology is radars. The four patents exclusively licensed to Ghost Wave are for RF noise radars. The basic technology makes them stealthy while being immune from jamming and interference. The importance of this to the Army is these radars are stealthy. They're undetectable by threats who are looking for RF signals. Additionally, because of the random noises we are generating, we have a low probability of jamming, interference, and detection. Since the AUSA semifinals in October 2019, the project has evolved. Ghostway received a $1.2 million contract with Ohio Federal Research Network for this identical project. We have evolved and simplified the perimeter monitoring sensor to a modular style, making the solution adaptable to FOB needs. I guess we're going. Um, <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dean Zodi, founder and CEO of Ghost Wave. Ghost Wave is a radar engineering company based out of Columbus, Ohio. Sitting with me, I have John Baer and Craig Gildenmeister. Just a year ago, a Saudi Arabia oil refinery was attacked by drones and cruise missiles. According to the Guardian News, they flew too low to be detected by the Patri Patriots ground based radar system. And even if they could see the threats, the radars were pointing in the wrong direction. This is a big problem. According to the Pentagon, the U.S. has around 5,000 bases throughout the globe. 174 in Germany, 113 in Japan, and thousands more dotted across <clears throat> the, the globe. This is a significant problem. As the growth of unmanned aerial systems or drone grows and advanced air mobility vehicles increases, systems must be implemented for detection and of incoming threats. Radars are good for detecting range, velocity, and direction of travel, but they can be hacked and jammed and create ghost images. Cameras are good for classification, but they don't operate well in degraded visual environments like fog, rain, or snow. Ghostwave uses patented technology from Ohio State University to build radars that are stealthy and immune from jamming and interference using RF noise technology. This, when sensor fused with cameras, provide the best solution for perimeter monitoring of low altitude threats. Let's do a little bit of a deep dive into radars. Right now, you have radars doing your blind spot detection, lane change assist, adaptive cruise control in your car. As we get to be, have a proliferation of radars, there's increased opportunities for hacking, jamming, and mutual interference where the radars are actually talking to each other. Ghostwave has millions of unique signals where anti-jamming, low probability of intercept, and very stealthy. Our technology is we take a random signal generator, we generate that one of the millions of signals, we store that in the memory, yet we transmit that after passing through an oscillator. At different range gates, we're looking for that unique signal to come back, and as a result, we have the same performance of current radars. Another way to look at this is if you have an AM radio and you've heard the static, or if you remember older TVs that if you turn to a channel that didn't exist, it was all snowy, well, that's RF noise. And what we're doing is we're creating our own RF noise, throwing it out into the RF noise, but we know what ours looks like, and we're looking for that unique signal to come back to us. Ghost Wave, uh, we're going to compare that to the semiconductor markets. A lot of them are making ICs for current radars. The current ICs have repetitive chips. 
where GhostWave has the millions of random wave waveforms. The benefits, immune from jamming, immune from interference, and we work and play well with the other radars in the vicinity. Now, back to the XTEC search project. We're looking at forward operating base protection, surveillance, perimeter monitoring. Well, in this program, we'd look at a 360 degree camera, doing a sensor fusion with the ghost wave radar and feeding that information into an existing security system. When you put this all together and you look at the available sensors for such a perimeter monitoring system, the ghost wave radar and the camera provide the best solution. Back in October, we went to AUSA with the vision of a cylinder with multiple antennas with multiple transmits and having to deal with conformal uh, detection of the different signals. <clears throat> that was getting very complicated for us. And we realized that as we pursued the project a little bit further. Now, we've made a modular design of the current product. You can buy one to four modules depending on the coverage that you're looking for. Additionally, the cameras that we were looking at were probably not gonna be adequate for the range that we, were, we needed. So we came up with a new design that still can go to 360 degrees, but we have a sniper and a scout camera now for classification of the threats. How did we get here? Well, first of all, I think making it to the X-Tech search finals was a real feather in our cap. It gave Ghostway some credibility. Back in June, we did the white paper. In August, we had a pitch in Boston, and then AUSA back in October. Shortly afterwards, in November, we received a $1.2 million contract from Ohio Federal Research Network for this project. Now, we're sitting here in September, and it's the X-Tech search finals. Our objective uh, remains the same with the OFRN. We want to take that sensor fusion, feed it into existing command and control systems, such as, such as General Dynamics, Raytheon, or SIPTAC. This program has had a lot of technical merit since it started. It actually started with the Army going to Ohio State University and asking them for some sort of ballistic identification for their helicopters. Ohio State came up with RF noise radar so that we could detect the ballistics in a stealthy manner and not have a signal or a target for threats on the ground to lock into and shoot a projectile at the uh, helicopter. Ohio State patent that. License it to exclusively to Ghost Wave. We are currently wrapping up a project with OFRN for a drone collision avoidance, which is doing onboard camera radar sensor fusion, onboard avoidance algorithms, feeding the autopilot of the drone. And as I mentioned earlier, we had the 1.2 million for the sensor fusion for the perimeter monitoring, and we're at the XTEC search finals right now. Also, the evolution of this technology with Ghost Wave really supports where we're going with this project. We started out with a minimum viable product um, with a grant from Ohio Development. We were wrapping up the onboard detect and avoid system. Now we're going out a lot longer ranges. And as we evolve our technology, as we evolve with our knowledge, I think this is a good next step for where we're going with Ghost Wave. The team, uh, I myself, has an engineering degree and MBA from Ohio State with over 20 years of telecom experience. John Barrison at the end of the table here, uh, co-founded a company called Pinnacle Data Systems while in college in 1989 that grew to a global manufacturer. He took the company public uh, on the NASDAQ, then led the acquisition by Avnet. Now he's working for Converge Technologies, where we're standing in right now. Dr. Villarol is our radar consultant. Uh, he has over 20 years experience in automotive radar technology. Mike and Susan are on the Ghostway Board of Directors. They both have extensive technology commercialization experience. And Dave Bergeron is with an incubator in Columbus called Red One Ventures that I used to uh, volunteer with. And now they're a big supporter of Ghostway. Also with our OFRN contracts, <clears throat> we need to have academic partners. Dr. Collins is with the Air Force Institute of Technologies. He's our uh, primary contact for RF noise technology questions. Sinclair Community College is providing us a lot of drones for both of our projects right now. They have their own UAS, National UAS Center. 
And I mentioned Ohio State. They have a world-renowned electro science lab, a great anechoic chamber, and a good partner for these projects. Also, we have commercialization uh, support from this. Uh, with our drone collision avoidance, Lockheed Martin did the sensor fusion portion of that contract. General Dynamics is in conversations with us about using their command and control system for the output of our sensor fusion. And Converge Technologies is being used for engineering and model design. Once we did our white paper back in June of last year, Dan Curtin from the Army reached out and contacted us. So again, another great uh, introduction thanks to the XTEC search. Dan wrote a paper in March of last year called Ballistic Low Altitude Drone Engagement. And it's kind of like the wish list of what the Army wants to detect these low flying or low altitude threats. I highlighted in green a couple of things on the next three slides. They want to detect Group 1 drones 360 degrees, a range of at least three kilometers, day, night, all weather capability. We're checking all the boxes there with what we're proposing. Again, he wants it to be low power and to have an export to an external uh, system, such as the command and control systems we talked about earlier. And finally, they want to track at least 10 simultaneous targets. Well, we're going for 16. So from the Army paper itself, again, we're checking the boxes. This proposal fits in great with their needs. Visualization strategy. Uh, by the end of this year, we're going to have multiple radars linked. And by April, we're going to start target queuing at 1,500 meters. And by June of next year, we have to do an integration uh, and demonstration with our OFRN contract. And as I mentioned earlier, we're talking to General Dynamics about the integration into their common aviation command and control system or uh, the Department of Defense CIVTAC. For non-defense, uh, we are in conversations was with ODRC, the Ohio Department of Rehabil Rehabilitation and Corrections. And they have a big problem right now with drones carrying in weapons and drugs into the prisons. And at one point, uh, Nottaway Correctional Institute spotted six drones flying at once over their prison, all in different directions. The middle picture here is a drone at a Boston Red Sox game. And below, NATO is also, you know, indicated what we're doing is the right direction. Okay? You know, to offer reliable and effective defense against the drones, no one sensor can do the job. And then another opportunity for us is with the XTEC Search for Finalist Drone Shield. We've had conversations with Drone Shield, and I think we have very complementary products where the Ghost Wave system can detect, it can classify, and Drone Shield can kill. If it should be a good combination. And as we get closer to the end of our OFRN project and demonstration, I look forward to talking to Drone Shield a lot more about what we can do together. Uh, I want to kind of summarize a couple of the feedbacks from the judges in October. Uh, the two arrows here are pointing to Judge 1 and 4, who were uh, very supportive and positive to our cost targets for what we're doing here. And Judge 2, the need for inexpensive software-defined radar is high. Ghostwave has a software-defined radar. So th that's what we're working for right now. And then finally, I want to wrap up with this uh, from Robert Elder, Lieutenant General. Anybody can go to the store and buy equipment for $10,000 that can mimic our capability. This is why ghost wave radars are required. We want to have that advantage of the millions of random signals so people can't mimic what we're doing. And with that, I'm going to show a quick video. We will now move into a five minute public Q&A with the judges followed by the 10 minute private Q&A. Here we have the uh, camera and radar uh, GUIs and graphical user, user interface. And as you see the person and the radar and the camera, we're all seeing the same thing. Uh, this is actually a year old video, but what it's demonstrating is the RF noise radar and the ability to track multiple targets. In the top left, you're going to see a drone fly in in the, the detection of the drone by the radar. And this is uh, 
our first O4M project where we do have um, the sensor fusion. Um, again, it's not perimeter monitoring, but it is a demonstration of the camera and radar working together and also feeding to external systems, uh, as you see below. And pretty soon here, you're gonna see an avoidance where the drone just stops until the threat gets out of the way, then it'll resume its mission. This is where we started out uh, in October of last year with our 360 degree uh, radar and the conformal antennas. Again, very complicated. And we have evolved that to what you see here in the modular design of the uh, 360 degree potential radar. And again, the evolution of the cameras, uh, sniper and zoom cameras uh, with the special lenses that we will be integrating into um, the final system. And that's the demonstration. Thank you very much.